I would say, the Russian uh, Federation's uh, narrative drowned out the U.S. governments in the past years. They were accelerant. The Russian Federation, not just through Wag uh, Wagner, uh, stoked a lot of the instability across the Sahel. They did this through misinformation, disinformation campaigns. So I see how we will, could uh, double down in our efforts is through our own information campaign, but matched with our assurance efforts. So the U.S. believes that Russia is stoking instability across this wider region, the Sahel, and also taking advantage of that to profit off the natural resources, especially the gold mines in Niger. On the other hand, the Niger military junta leadership felt that they were getting lectured by the United States even after it cancelled all military and foreign cooperation after the U.S. designated this as a coup. So why would you lecture us when you're not supporting us in any way? Hi, so there you have it. Uh, so that is a, a CNN news report, though reported by an African reporter. It's the actual facts on the ground. Now, as you can see from this article here, I'm going to try to zoom it in. Uh, the CNN is saying that Russia is undermining relationship of critical West African ally with the United States. So they're saying that it's Russia undermining the, the relationship. And in a previous video, I told you that the U.S. maintains two air bases in Niger. And one of them is actually a recent air base that they constructed using 200 million U.S. dollars. Initially, they had estimated it to cost 100 million, but the budget doubled. And there you have more than 20 drones. Those are the, the types we see in the movie, the Reaper drones that can stay uh, airborne for close to 24 hours, you know, surveying and armed with the Hellfire missile. You see, you've seen those movies. And then there are the Reaper drones and the other MKU-9. That is the Reaper and the other one, Global Hawk. Those drones are there. And then there are more than 2,000 U.S. Air Force personnel on the same, the second air base, the, new, the modern one that is not far from the capital, uh, Niamey. And they also have an old one that they used to maintain. That one is a very close. Actually, it's in, inside the capital city itself. It's also an air base. So Niger had a coup last year, and the new rulers, the military junta, uh, were threatened by France. And France actually wanted to use uh, some unorthodox means to send in their special force or the French Régionaire to try to kill or maybe arrest the leaders of this coup. So what this coup, the, the coup leaders did was that they borrowed a leaf from their neighboring Burkina Faso and they got these Russian mercenaries from the Wagner group to come, uh, to come and protect these uh, coup leaders. And from that time, they've been inviting more of these Russian mercenaries. Uh, some reports say 500 are there in Niger. There's 1,500 in the neighboring Burkina Faso. And there's another 1,000 in Mali. And the ones in Mali have started showing results there. Uh, about the end of, uh, by the end of the last year, they had uh, helped Mali to kick out these Islamic jihadists. And they have recaptured this town called Kidal in the north of Mali that have been in the hands of these Islamists since the year 2011. So these mercenaries are very good at what they do. And that's why those three countries are really using them. In Mali, they were given military support by the, the Russians. They got about eight military helicopters and other weapon systems. In Burkina Faso, they recently got some helicopters, several jets, and other weapon systems from Russia. So the same thing can be said that Niger is planning to get those military support from the Russians. And this has influenced the Western countries, mostly the U.S. and France. As a matter of fact, I said this in another video, uh, which I have here. Uh, in this video, I had said that of all the coups, let me try to play it. 
Of all the coups that have taken place in Africa, mostly to kick out the French influence on the continent, the Nigerian one was the most painful to the French government. So in that video, I said that of all the coups that recently took place there in the Sahel region, the Niger one was the most painful because the kind of influence the French companies lost in Niger is unprecedented, is unquantifiable. And I, I said that this, this company in France called Areva, initially it had a different name, now they've rebranded it to Areva, and this company has been mining uranium in Niger. And the estimates is that they mine uh, uranium worth 20 billion US dollars every single year. That is the uranium, right? And they don't pay the, uh, as much back to the government in Niger. And it's just logic. If Niger was getting 20 billion dollars, that might, it would be visible there. You would see good roads, good highways, uh, modern hospitals, uh, modern, you know, modern uh, infrastructure, modern schools, education sector improving, and people getting jobs in different sectors. 20 billion euros is a lot of money. For any country in Africa, it's a lot. Believe me, I know. Uh, in my own country, if you gave us 20 billion a year, it, it, would support, it would surpass our annual budget by close to uh, about, uh, you know, about 1 billion and a half, uh, around 10 billion there. It would surpass that because we, we maintain our, our annual budget of about uh, 13 to 15 billion euros. So 20 is a lot. And my country, Kenya, is one of the top five, top six countries in Africa uh, in anything. You know, if you talk of internet penetration, you talk of electricity distribution, you talk of technological, you talk of uh, the GDP, you talk of anything, we always feature in the top five. So we are among the top five countries in anything on Africa, including maybe the population, right? Okay, not the population, but we are among the top five of most of the things. And still 20 billion euros a year is a lot for us, if, if you gave it to us, right? So if Niger was getting even half of that, that's what I'm trying to say. And Niger is not even among the top 30 uh, African countries in anything, in anything. If you talk of uh, human uh, you know, life expectancy, they are not there among the top 20. Talk of the GDP, not among the top 20. Talk of, talk of uh, per capita income, not among the top 30, right? They are not among the top 30 of anything. Unless, of course, you're talking about uh, suffering. If you talk of that, Niger will feature among the top 30. So, you understand the scope. 20 billion is a lot of money, but they are not paying that money. They are not even paying them half of that, not even 10% of that. So they were making money from exploiting Niger. And these military leaders there, they have kicked out the French company there, from what I'm hearing. So no more uranium for France. And the other thing I said in this video, uh, which is on my channel, and a lot of uh, people have watched, the 150,000, uh, is that... France uh, is actually one of those countries that uh, in Europe is uh, relies on nuclear reactors for their energy needs. It's the leader in nuclear reactors probably in the whole world uh, apart from China. France is the second most nuclear reactor dependent country in the whole world. So that's how they they were they were running their electricity by stealing from Niger. And when these leaders, the ones you're seeing there, uh, kicked the French out of that country, France blamed the Russians. And the Russians were not there. As a matter of fact, this year, Russia reopened their embassy in Niger, in the capital Niamey, for the first time in 30 years. 
The last time they had an embassy there was during the Soviet time, the USSR. And now when they became Russia in 1991, they never maintained any embassy in the whole of West Africa. Today, this year, they reopened the one in Niger and the other one in Burkina Faso. So Russia was not there. These guys, the leaders, these military realized that the French were exploiting their country. They were stealing their resources and not paying uh, uh, enough money according to the agreement. And they decided to take the power there. And France is blaming the Russians. And they've suggested sending French troops to fight in Ukraine. And they want to start World War Three with the Russia because of the embarrassment they suffered in West Africa. And today, the United States is saying the same thing. They're saying that, uh, according to the CNN article, let me go there, they're saying that Russia is undermining the relationship between them and Niger. If you read the article, that's what it says. And they might also try to do those things that France intends to do in Ukraine, though they are doing it, but they have not sent their troops there. So that is the latest story, that Niger and Burkina Faso are kicking out these countries that have been operating on their soil and giving them nothing in return. Someone comes to live in my house and I don't. he doesn't even foot the bills, he doesn't even pay part of the electricity he uses in my house. And when I ask him to leave because I want another tenant, he's like, that new tenant is undermining the relationship that bad tenant had with me. So, so that is the kind of scenario that is taking place in West Africa. The Russians are coming in with this Russian uh, Wagner group, mercenaries. They are helping these countries to fight Islamic jihadis. They are also offering some form of or sense of protection there. And the West that have been there for more than 70 years, more than 100 years in the case of France, doing nothing but exploiting these countries, are now angry that West African countries are waking up. They are kicking out the French interest from West Africa and that the Russians are behind it. It's not the Russians. The West Africans are waking up. They've, they have always known this. The problem they have had is that they've had stooges and puppets in their governments, you know, civilian governments. And these military leaders have decided that enough is enough. So according to this article, they are saying Russia wants to control the whole, the entire Sahel region. The Sahel region starts from Sudan. It goes all the way to Mauritania. And they're saying that Russia intends to control all those countries in West Africa there. Because that's what is happening. Actually, these countries are inviting the Russians to come to help them. And what these countries are actually doing is they're trying to flee themselves from the grip of these Western countries.